In the introduction to these dialogues, I discussed that the purpose is to let you hear from an experienced researcher about how she thinks about using Atlas TI and how this reflects the five-level QDA principles. In this first part, we discuss how an apparently code-based software package like Atlas TI gets used by an interpretive researcher for discourse analysis, which does not center around a coding process. I open by introducing the principle that the five-level QDA approach is independent of the methodology being used. One of the principles is that this method, which is how experts think about how to use software in a, in a good way, powerful way, that it's irrelevant what methodology is used because the methodology is all about the strategies. And then once you get to an analytic task, which is a fairly low level of detail, and then translate that into the software, it makes no difference what kind of methodology it is. However, in the literature, it is, there's all kinds of stuff about how these programs are so influenced originally by grounded theory and code-oriented methods. So I'm just interested, just in a general way, how you think about discourse analysis and software and how other discourse analysts think about software. I would say that language-based methodologies be even beyond discourse analysis, but also narrative analysis, conversation analysis, maybe even visual methods. A lot of those more interpretive approaches don't necessarily require coding, even though that's what people think about when they think about software, and that's actually caused a lot of misconceptions and even resistance to people using the software over the years. So yes, I did start out by doing this kind of analysis by hand, but what brought me over to Atlas was having an extremely large data set of blog posts and online discussions uh. where we needed to narrow the data set and so we did use the coding feature to find some keywords or phrases or critical incidents that we wanted to look at further. But we, so we looked at coding as almost a filtering tool or a scoping tool and not so much as the analytic part. And then we use the memo, comment, and writing tools to really do our analysis as well as uh, the network views. Because with discourse and other language-based approaches, you're also often looking for the structure of how the talk is put together, not necessarily just what they're saying. So the network tools or the comments or the writing tools can help you analyze in an interpretive way what's happening and how the argument is put together. And so codes per se, just as like a tagging tool, aren't necessarily the most useful tool. So my colleague, Jessica Lester, and I actually ended up writing a whole article about this because we got so much pushback, especially from conversation analysts, that software absolutely could not be used for analysis, which is, of course, silly. Our contention is that five-level QDA just unpacks what experts have figured out what to do and are doing. You've figured out just because codes feature in other methodologies as the analytical tool, you could use them for other purposes. Right. So if you were going to do a discourse study today, which used a rather small amount of data, would you use the same kind of style or techniques that you developed in this for a large data set? What, what's more dominant in your developing the tools to use? Yeah, you know, it was the size of the data set that got me to adopt the software, but I use the software now for all of my research, no matter what size the, the corpus is. The tools, the different aspects of what Atlas can provide uh, far outweigh needing to decide on it based on the size of the data alone. I mean, even if I was just looking at five interviews or five blog posts, I would still use the software for data management and just especially for collaboration, because then you can be sure everybody's looking at the same thing at the same same time, you're not misplacing things. You mm -hmm. can be very specific about what parts of the data you want people to be looking at and reflecting on. And yeah, I definitely would use the software really no matter what kind of study I was doing and eventually even got into using it for literature reviews, which was just sort of like a surprising benefit of having the tool. 